Okay, hello. Let's do proof 43 and 42 uh, right now from the fixed style uh, proofs packet. Um, and we shall do 43 first because 43 is significantly easier. Uh, so, okay, let's go. Uh, it says this thing which we've observed already. Uh, this is the so-called De Morgan laws that if it's not the case that there exists someone who's pretty, then everybody is not pretty. Preppy, whatever, pick your favorite uh, P, P adjective. Um, okay, uh, well, let's just do it. Um, okay, I, I really I don't really need this, but put that there. Um, okay, so this is a proof uh, from, from no premises, and so, you know, the beginning of it kind of just writes itself. Uh, I will assume that there does not exist a person with property P, and I will try to show that everyone um, uh, doesn't have property P. Okay, and why is this the case? Well, okay, maybe we, we don't even want to talk about this yet. Maybe we should just kind of jump in and do it, because um, uh, I should be guided. And, okay, and then I'm going to turn around. And, and to do the reverse, right, which is to assume that everyone uh, doesn't have property P. So, okay, working from the outside in, uh, I will conclude that it's not the case that uh, there is someone with property P. And then I'm entitled to, to my conclusion. Um, so I'll just kind of write that all in now. Um, okay. Yeah, well, uh, why, what should I do? Uh, well, I need to prove a universal statement, and when I want to prove a universal statement, there's like an extremely straightforward way to, to do this, uh, and that's to just uh, do it uh, by universal proof. Um, so if I want to show that everyone, uh, ha, ha, if it, I want to show that for everybody, not P of X, then um, I will take an arbitrary object from the domain, so pick an arbitrary uh, object A, and if I can show about A that it doesn't have property P, well, from nothing, if A doesn't have property P and A was arbitrary, then uh, it's true for everyone that they don't have property P. Okay, so this gives me kind of a direction, and actually uh, the next step is also completely intuitive, because if I want to show that A doesn't have property P, then there's a very straightforward way of doing that, and that is to assume that A does have property B. And if I can arrive at a contradiction, well, then I know that, uh, that that's false. Okay, and now also, uh, it's pretty clear, I think, why 1 and 2 uh, will, will lead to a contradiction, because, um, well, if A has property uh, P, then that means there exists someone with property P. And so here we say that this is existential intro, uh, line, uh, line two, and well, there it is, right? Because uh, saying that there exists someone with property P and there doesn't exist someone with property P, this is uh, and intro uh, one, two, I guess I'll write it as three, one, three, one, uh, while well, this leads directly to a bottom, uh, bottom intro four, and thus, I really did it. I started with the fact that A had property P. I arrived at a contradiction pretty easily. Thus, A doesn't have property P. Um, negation intro uh, 2 to 5. And uh, so, having, uh, having taken an arbitrary object and showing that that arbitrary object doesn't have property P, uh, I conclude that everyone doesn't have property P. Universal intro uh, 2 through 6. So beginning just above line 2, but that proposition, that, that, that line of the proof doesn't get a number because it's not a proposition. Uh, okay, so uh, maybe that was just so easy that if you, if you get it, uh, then you get it, and there it is. Maybe there's nothing more to say. Ha ha ha, I have more to say, of course. Uh, well, uh, what now? Uh, now let's go in the other order. Well, once again, I'm kind of guided by the by the the main connective in this proposition, which is that it's not the case that there exists a P. So so uh, well, that's a negation. So if that's a negation, then I think there's there's a clear thing to do, 
which is to suppose that there is someone with property P, and if I arrive at a contradiction, uh, then I'll say that there, that there isn't. And, okay, now what? Well, I have these two statements, 8 and 9, and somehow together they need to lead to a contradiction. Well, 9 seems like the, the place to start, because 9 is asserting the existence of a person, and if there is some person with property P, then I need to be able to talk about that person, and in order to be able to talk about that person, I have to give them a temporary name. And so, I now uh, do that thing where I, well, oops, uh, <clears throat> my particular syntax for this, which, I, which is pretty standard, uh, is to um, uh, introduce this, this kind of variable along with uh, its, its sort of defining property of this variable, which is that um, uh, it has property P, and, and really, okay, I really don't feel like writing this now, but maybe it's, it's good uh, for me to write it every time, instead maybe I'll just say it. What I'm really doing right now is I am deciding to call the object inline 9 A. So this is a temporary name. So, uh, so basically name, name the object in, that, that, that line 9 asserts the existence of some object. Let's agree to temporarily name that object A. Okay, and well, right away we see a problem. Because line 8 says that in fact for everyone they're not pretty. Uh, well, uh, A is someone now I can talk about, and so uh, A is not pretty according to this line 8. So this is a universal elim uh, 8. Uh, everyone has the property of being not pretty, so A is not pretty. But, but that's, that's a contradiction, right? Because I now have that A is pretty and A is not pretty, uh, and uh, intro uh, 10 and 11, so that's, that's a contradiction. And, okay, now we get to the part which is maybe slightly subtle, but uh, that contradiction uh, is now um, uh, uh, sort of um, usable back in the main body of the proof. And that's because um, this entire subproof, which began here, uh, just in line 10, the introduction of this variable was uh, as I've been uh, indicating, uh, the, the, the result of merely exploring uh, a fact that was already kind of inherent in line 9. Line 9 asserts the existence of a person. I say, let's call that person something just for the moment, you know, for the time being. Let's just give that person a name, says me. Uh, and if by simply naming that person uh, is enough to arrive at a certain conclusion that does not reference that person, and this this bottom in line 13 certainly doesn't have any A's in it. That's the kind of technical uh, rule that's required. Well then, in fact, this is just true. And so the, the bottom that we arrive at in line 13 uh, really flows from line 9, you should say to yourself. And so the justification for line 14 is that this is an existential elimination. Uh, I used the, the, the existential in line 9, and what I did in lines 10 through 13 because I explored that existential to arrive at a kind of general truth. Uh, and so I eliminated it because uh, I, I used it. All right, uh, well, now we're done. Uh, I got the bottom I wanted. Um, this is negation intro 9 through 14. And here we have a biconditional um, uh, intro uh, 1 through 7, 8 through 15. Okay. So, uh, I'm kind of good, and maybe you are too, and maybe you got this one by yourself, I hope you did. Um, uh, we could just sort of, you know, move on or whatever, or we could dwell for a moment. And I think the dwelling is maybe a good idea, because um, we're going to now see, uh, uh, by, 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 for, for what reason, I, I guess, do we call these, like, you know, the De Morgan Laws? Well, uh, they're, they're the sort of infinite version of the finite De Morgan Laws, um, and the version, and so over here or something, I'm going to redo this entire proof um, to sort of uh, show some symmetry. So, okay, if you're sick of this, maybe, you know, skip ahead in the video uh, or something. Uh, but um, this uh, proof that says that there's, there does not exist someone, well, this is the equivalent, this is the infinite version of the proof that said something like, Okay, well, imagine now there are just two objects in my entire uh, domain. Let's call them maybe, you know, uh, I don't know, B and C or something like that. Uh, okay, so there, if, there are, if there are two objects in my domain only, 
then if there does not exist someone with property P, then that's kind of just like saying that it's not the case that uh, P of B and P of C. No, uh, or, sorry. Uh, because saying that uh, there exists someone who is pretty is kind of like saying B is pretty or C is pretty, if there are only two people. And so to say that it's not the case uh, that there exists a pretty person is to say that it's not the case that one of P or B is pretty. And uh, what's the equivalent of this? This is this says that everyone is not pretty. So I want to be able to conclude from this that um, I have no idea how much space I need, but uh, that uh, it's not true. Th oh no, sorry. Everyone is not pretty. So so not uh, P of B and not P of C. In other words, uh, we're basically now doing just a propositional logic proof. This is the this is the basic propositional logic to Morgan law which says the negation of a disjunction is the conjunction of the negations. Uh, okay, um, let's try to, to do this, let's do this proof right now to sort of examine some, some parallels. And uh, I think there's an, sort of an exact parallel here, right? Because what is P of B and P, well, I need to prove both of these, right? How do I do that? Um, I prove them both individually. And so uh, how do I prove, say, not P of B? Well, I start a little subproof proof here um, with uh, P of B. And I, I try to, to get a contradiction. Well, uh, uh, how do I do that? Uh, well, I'm going to OR on P of C. And now, okay, I'm getting a little lazy here, but well, maybe I shouldn't, shouldn't be, just should just not be lazy, but uh, kind of running out of space. So I'm just going to say, and, you know, line one or something, right? So uh, I, I start with the fact that, that B is pretty. Okay, but if B is pretty, then B is pretty or C is pretty. But then if B is pretty or C is pretty, well then that's just a contradiction with line one, and so I, I get a and so I get a bottom. And thus I've showed that uh, that B is not pretty. And because I'm just a pathetic little, you know, propositional logic user, I now have to repeat this logic <coughs> all over again uh, with object C. And okay, well it's a good thing there are only two objects in my domain. Uh, so this proof isn't, isn't even longer than it is already. Now I suppose, in fact, that C is pretty, and now I look, I intentionally weaken my, uh, my, my statement in line 7 by uh, oaring on to it uh, P, uh, P of B, uh, and uh, now, okay, once again, I'll, I'll kind of run out of room uh, because, I'm, because I'm lazy, and I'll just say, and line 1, um, because line one says that that, that line nine uh, that line eight is impossible, uh, and so I get a contradiction, and from that contradiction I conclude that in fact a C is not pretty, uh, and then I add them together. Okay, so that's the proof that you've been that we did already like a month ago. Um, is there anything to learn from having done this? Yeah, I really think there is. Right, so there's there's some sort of deep, uh, well, not about deep, but there are definitely parallels here uh, between what's going on because. In fact, you should just see this as, as the exact same thing. Here, the only difference is that instead of there being only two objects in the domain, there are perhaps thousands or maybe even an infinite, num an infinite number of them. And whereas this says it's not the case that either of them is pretty, here we are saying it's not the case that sort of anyone is pretty. So this existential one should think of as kind of an infinite string of ors saying about each person. Uh, they're pretty, or they're pretty, or they're pretty, or they're pretty, and what we're saying is that no, it's not the case that any of them is pretty. Uh, and if you look at this little proof here, what we did here is we said, okay, we supposed that A was pretty. In fact, what's going on in line two is exactly uh, this, this assumption is exactly what happens here in lines two and line seven. I'm temporarily supposing that A is pretty. And then uh, what happens? Well, then uh, note what happened in the in the propositional case is I or on uh, some some statement to make my, my my thing sort of weaker. And okay, that's exactly what happens in the transition from from line two to line three, right? Um, here we we know that A is pretty, and now we sort of take the ultimate step in weakening, and we go from the specific knowledge that a particular 
person A is pretty to just the statement of all the someone is pretty. Um, so this is kind of, this move here is, is we just ord on possibly an infinite number of objects into it. So it's, it's, it's really this, this, line, this line 3 is the infinite version of, uh, of lines 3 and 8 over there. Uh, okay, well then, uh, I, I guess maybe there's not that much more to say at this point, right? We get our contradiction, uh, which, is, which is what's happening in line, in line 4 and 9. And then uh, we, we reach the bottom, uh, and boom, 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 and boom, 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 boom. And then uh, finally, you know, we conclude, okay, I have to pick a new color now or something. Uh, I, I conclude uh, the statement, uh, which in this case is line 6, but here is, is 6 and 11. Okay, and so you should actually view uh, what happened here in this top, uh, the top half of this proof as uh, kind of a, a more streamlined version of what happened over here. Because now, um, instead of having to prove uh, for each of the objects separately, this is kind of a boring, you know, repeat of the same argument, here I'm now doing the argument kind of like once and for all in general. And this is the deep way of understanding uh, what, what was really going on uh, in this subproof, which concludes in line 7. In line 7, we say that uh, everyone has this property uh, of being not pretty, and uh, I assert that everyone has this property by having sort of simultaneously proved it about each and every person. Whereas here I had to tediously prove it about B and C separately that they had the property of being not pretty. Here by choosing arbitrary object A uh, and applying the logic to this arbitrary object, I show that it's true not just for these two objects but for sort of all possible objects uh, that they are in fact uh, not pretty. Okay, I think this is a good uh, uh, way of really, really understanding what's going on. Uh, this is kind of a logic class or something, so uh, hopefully you're watching. Can we continue this process? Of course we can. Uh, now I will um, construct the propositional analog for the second half of Proof 43. Well, what is it? Um, what's going on? Well, um, okay, uh, what does it say? It says everyone is not pretty. Well, that's just a way of saying that, uh, well, that B is not pretty and C is not pretty. And what I'd like to conclude from that way down here is that there does not exist a pretty person. Okay, so it's, it's just the converse of, of what we did above, um, but I'll do it anyway. So here we are, not the case that um, P of B uh, or P of C, hopefully that's enough space. Okay, and well, how did we uh, do this, this proof uh, back when we were doing propositional logic. Well, here, once again, it's a negation, so it's pretty clear what to do. We should suppose uh, it and, and, get, uh, and get a bottom. So, okay, up here in line 14, I will say P of B or P of C, and I will try to get a contradiction. And here, I'm just going to now do a proof by cases. So I'm going to say, okay, well, suppose on the one hand, it's P of B, and, well, that doesn't work, right? Because I get uh, P of B, and, well, I suppose I first have to decompose that line 13, so not P of B, uh, and then uh, I get uh, 17, uh, 18, this will be P of B and not P of B, and here we get a bottom. And then I repeat it, that, that's case one. So then uh, case two is I suppose instead perhaps it's P of C, uh, but I know uh, not P of C from, from line 13, so that's uh, P of C and not P of C, and that's a bottom. And so the conclusion here is bottom uh, by proof by cases, and so 24 and so 25 is, is, is the biconditional and, and, and we're happy. Okay, once again, can I, can I become a deep uh, understander by, by sort of comparing and contrasting these two proofs? I think so, uh, because what, what's now? Uh, well, uh, I already discussed how, how line 13 over here and line, and line 8 over here are, are analogs of each other. Um, what's the first thing uh, I did over here in the propositional logic proof? Well, I supposed this uh, disjunction 
And uh, so some bun is pretty, right? It's either P or B or C. Well, there are only two people, so it's got to be one of them. So of course, that's the exact analog of what's going on here in number nine, right? I'm supposing that someone is pretty. Here, I'm supposing that someone is pretty, but there are only two people. Then, uh, kind of, what do I do? Well, I say, okay, well, suppose it's uh, B. On the one hand, suppose it's B uh, that's pretty. Uh, and yet, I have to kind of repeat it uh, in this boring, uh, tedious fashion for sort of both cases. Well, that's what's going on here. I'll put a red dot here, right? Here, I'm supposing that A is pretty. Uh, and then I, uh, I, I kind of, um, uh, you know, remind you or something here in purple that I actually know that can't be. Uh, because uh, I have this kind of previous line, uh, this line 13, which says that they're, that they're not pretty. Well, that's exactly what's going on here in line 11, right? In line 11, I sort of remind you that no, in fact, uh, my overall assumption that everyone is not pretty tells me that, that, that A is not pretty. Okay, and then, uh, of course, uh, the contradiction. So this is line 17, 21, and 12. And finally, uh, the, the, the contradiction, uh, which happens uh, right here, and that happens right here. Okay, and then, uh, I guess I can even go one more step further. Let's, let's get a, 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 a sort of double blue dot or something. So, in the propositional logic proof, I conclude this double blue dot, line 23. What is that? That's the conclusion of my proof by cases. Uh, I got bottom uh, in both 18 and 22, so now I conclude bottom. Well, here, uh, once again, I also have a double blue dot, because uh, this is also the conclusion of a proof by cases of, of a certain type, but it's an infinite proof by cases. And, um, and then, uh, okay, uh, this is getting kind of silly, but uh, maybe we, here we get this sort of double red, and here kind of double red as well. So what's, what's kind of going on now is whereas over here I had to consider for each uh, person in my domain separately whether they were pretty and, and arrived at a contradiction. Here, because there were perhaps a very large number of people or perhaps even an infinite number of people to consider, then uh, what's, what's really happening in this line 9 is I say, well, someone is pretty. Here it's either B or C, but here it could be anybody. And so I can't very well do a proof by cases, because they don't have only two cases, they have an infinite number of cases. And so what's really going on here is somehow kind of more elegant, right? This thing in the red uh, circle here really should be thought of as one case of an infinite proof by cases. And when viewed that way, I think this just makes complete sense, right? We're supposing that A is pretty, and the A now is meant to refer to sort of anyone uh, in my domain. Uh, that, that might be the one that, uh, that is pretty by virtue of line 9, right? Line 9 says someone is pretty, so let's just consider for every single one of those people that might be pretty, uh, what, what, what there is to say about them. And the fact is that uh, for any of these pretty people, uh, well, that's just impossible. And therefore, uh, the fact that there was a pretty person in line 9 is, is just impossible. Okay, uh, good. Uh, if you've been watching this entire video, I think you have an extremely deep understanding, not just of Proof 43, but of the, the relationship between the, the propositional logic de Morgan's Laws and the, the quantifier de Morgan's Laws, and hopefully you're getting just really, really good and, and comfortable uh, with, with all of these rules. Okay, I'm going to erase this now. It's probably already been like half an hour or something. Oh, man. 23 minutes. Uh, proof 42 is just so much harder than Proof 43, in my opinion. And I think it's, it's just quite hard, um, but on the other hand, uh, if you can do it, you know, you can, you can really kind of do anything. And uh, if you uh, can do 42, you know, sort of all by yourself and with total understanding, then you've, you've already, you're at the top of the mountain, uh, basically, I think. Uh, okay, uh, what is this proof 42? Once again, I managed to sort of accidentally put it in the wrong order, because this, this one should really go uh, second, because it's, it's more difficult. Uh, and I think I also put the, the proposition sort of in the wrong order. So I'm going to, you know, modify this slightly just to do the easy one first, you know, just just cause or whatever. So um, what is it? Uh, there exists an x not p of x. Uh, of course, it doesn't really matter what order you do this in, but uh, not uh, for all x p 
P of X. Okay, so uh, as I was saying, in one direction, I think it's, it's straightforward, and in one direction, it's quite hard. Okay, so let's do the easy one first. Uh, I want to go from, from here to here, in, in, that, in the left to right direction. Okay, well, let's go. I'm going to write kind of small. I don't know how much space I'm going to need. Hopefully not that much, uh, maybe. Uh, okay, here we go. Line one, I shall assume that there exists an x such that not p of x, and I will conclude uh, down here that it's not the case that for all x, p of x. All right, well, we've been doing this for a while now. I think without even thinking, I can just immediately um, look at the thing I'm trying to prove uh, and, and say, yeah, and say that uh, if it's a negation, then the, the way to go is to, to suppose it and, and arrive at a contradiction. So, okay, I'm going to suppose that for all x, uh, P of X, and if I can get a bottom, then, then I'm done. Uh, okay, great. Uh, what now? Well, lines one and two are just clearly contradictory, because line two is saying everyone is pretty, line one is saying that there's not someone who is pretty. Uh, sorry, that there is someone who is not pretty. So, if line one says there is someone who is not pretty, but line two says that everyone is pretty, then that's just impossible. Why? Well, in order to make any progress with line one, in order to, to use it in any kind of way, I need to temporarily name that person. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. I am going to uh, start a new little subproof here in which I name the person in line 1 and I am going to name that person A. Uh, okay, great. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I name that person A. And, well, here we go, right? Uh, line 4 says that everyone is pretty. So if everyone is pretty, then A is pretty. But that means that A is both pretty and not pretty. I suppose I should annotate here. What does this come from? That comes from uh, universal elim 2. Uh, and this is uh, and intro uh, intro um, 3 and 4. And then uh, I have a bottom here, bottom intro 5, um, and there here in line 7 now uh, is the, the part where that requires some skill and understanding, but okay, maybe we're, we're getting better at this. Uh, and the thing that we're getting better at, I'm just going to keep doing this, I guess, uh, is to realize that this entire thing in the red circle is... Uh, an exploration of line one. Line one asserts that some person is not pretty. Here we temporarily name that person A. We see that that's impossible. And so um, that means that that impossibility must have just come from line one itself. Of course, with the combination of line two. Uh, and so, uh, our justification for, for this line 7 is we did an existential elimination. We eliminated uh, the existential in line 1, which is to say we used it, uh, and we used it in, in lines 3 through 6. Okay, so I get my contradiction. Uh, thus, I say that, uh, that it's not the case that everyone is pretty, and so that's uh, universal... No, sorry. Uh, that's just a uh, negation in intro 2 through 7. Okay, uh, I don't want to call that easy, nothing's easy, but it was pretty straightforward. At every moment I sort of knew exactly what to do, and I, I didn't think that was really very hard. Okay, <clears throat> the rest, uh, the second half of this is um, the most difficult uh, one of the four de Morgan's laws. If you think of them as, as really the proofs of four conditionals, this is the hardest one. And uh, here we go, line 9, not the case that everyone is pretty. From this, I want to conclude, uh, way down here, that, um, that there exists an X that is not pretty. And, yeah. And thus, I will conclude, by the way, uh, the thing, the very thing uh, I'm trying to prove. I'll just write it this way. You know, it's the biconditional. Uh, who, who cares what, uh, what order we write it in? This is substantially uh, proof, uh, proof 42. Okay, 
Uh, so, all I have to do is get from, from line 9 to the bottom. How am I going to do it? Well, I have sort of two problems or something. One is um, that uh, I don't know how to prove that there is uh, a person who is not pretty. And there's really only one way to, to, to sort of introduce an existential. And the only way to introduce an existential is to, to prove it about some very particular thing. But, uh, so I would have to maybe, like, you know, somehow uh, down here, uh, I would have to, to somehow produce some particular person, you know, who is not pretty. And if I could somehow prove that there was a, some particular person who is, who is not pretty, then I could say that uh, there exists someone who's not pretty. But, of course, that's just kind of hopeless, right? Uh, there's no way I'm going to be able to conjure a particular pretty object. Uh, merely from the fact that uh, that there's not um, uh, it's not the case that everyone is pretty. Uh, of course, this is a, basically a, a general um, fact about logic, which is going to be true, you know, regardless of the meaning of p, regardless of of, of the domain uh, of discourse. So that's just sort of hopeless uh, for me to be able to mm, to prove that mm, any one person uh, meets meets this requirement, and so. There's kind of nothing to do. Oh, I also can't work from the forward direction because, well, line 9 is a negation, and, and negations are not immediately usable in any kind of way. Uh, and so, all right, upon thinking about this for a while, you realize, man, I just have to do this by contradiction. And uh, so, okay, I'll, I'll do it by contradiction. Mm. Uh, let's go. Uh, well, that means that up here in line 10, I shall suppose that it's not the case that there exists an x um, such that not p of x, chomp, chomp. And I will hopefully arrive at a contradiction. That contradiction will enable me to conclude not, not there exists an x, not p of x. And then I'll, I'll get rid of that uh, double negation on the front, and that'll be, that'll be that. All right, so now I just have to get this bottom somehow. But, um, OK, upon thinking about this for a minute or two, I realize Man, I'm still in bad shape, because I need to get a contradiction uh, out of lines 9 and 10, but both lines 9 and 10 are negations. And if line 9 is a negation and line 10 is a negation, uh, neither of them is immediately operable. And by that I mean, you know, I can't do anything with the negation, at least directly. Um, and, in fact, uh, this was supposed to be something that you understood very well from, from the previous unit on propositional logic. Uh, it's kind of like the only way to use a negation is to do a proof by contradiction. So sort of the destiny of any negation statement, of which these are, is to be combined uh, with its unnegated version to produce a contradiction. And so somehow, uh, I'm going to use either, either line 9 or line 10, the opposite of it, uh, together with 9 and 10 to, to get this bottom. And of course, it can't be line 10 uh, that, that is going to provide the, uh, the, the, the contradiction. Because if I could somehow, from thin air, if I could somehow, you know, conjure up uh, there exists an x not p of x, right? Uh, not, not really sort of using line 9 or 10, I guess I should say, if I could somehow not use line 9 or 10, but sort of produce this, well, then I would have just done that directly, right? It was, it was the very goal was to prove this statement, that there exists an x, not p of x, um, and it was the very fact that I couldn't do it, which caused me to sort of start this proof by contradiction in the first place. All right, so that's a kind of an argument that uh, it's got to be 9 that provides the contradiction. And so, all right, I have kind of a plan now the plan is, um, uh, is to prove for all of x, p of x, and that, it, um, yeah, and that is going to, to provide the contradiction that I want, because, of course, line 9 says that, um, that, that's, that that's false. Uh, so, okay, so uh, I, got, I have finally a goal now, uh, prove that everything has property p. Because if everything has property P, well, line 9 tells me that it's not true that everything has property P. That will give me a contradiction, and then, then this proof will be done. So we're really, really going outside in here. Okay, well, finally, 
uh, I'm feeling good because um, I have a, I have a goal, which is to prove that everything has property P, and I, I kind of know how to do that, right? How do I prove that everything has property P? I uh, take an arbitrary object, and so I'll, I'll do that now, and sort of from nothing, I prove that um, that uh, A has property uh, that A has property P. And if I can prove that A has property P from nothing, well, then everyone uh, has property P. Then I, I add that uh, together with with line um, nine and blah 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 blah. Okay. So now eyes on the prize. I got to get this. I got to show that A has property P. How am I going to do it? Well, unfortunately, I have to again. Uh, do a proof by contradiction, because there's no other way. I'm still stuck with lines 9 and 10, which are sort of not immediately operable, right? They're negations. I can't do anything with them. I can't eliminate them in any kind of way. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to do, I'm going to, the only thing I can do, which is start yet another subproof, uh, and I'm going to suppose that A is not pretty. So here I am now in a proof by contradiction inside of a universal proof, inside of a proof by contradiction, inside of a conditional proof, uh, I suppose, is, is, is the way of looking at it. And okay, now I'm going to um, uh, hope that I can get a bottom out of this. And if so, then it will show me not not P, then uh, P of A, then P of A, etc. Okay, and uh, I now have three negations. So how do I uh, coax a contradiction out of these three negations together? Well, okay, finally I think there's something to do. Because line 10 says that it's not the case that there exists a person who's not pretty. But here's a pretty person. So if here's a pretty person, well then it means that there exists an X. Uh, sorry, here's a not pretty person. So that means that there exists an X such that not P of X. Uh, reason uh, existential intro uh, existential intro line um, line 11 and well there there it is because uh, 12 just contradicts 10 right so there exists an X such that not P of X and there does not exist an X such that not P of X uh, so I'm just gonna notate it uh, just below this is an and intro lines um, lines 12 and 10 and there's there's my bottom so 14 I have a bottom uh, intro uh, line 13 note now that I'm just okay, now I'm just adding in numbers and, and, and explanations but in line 11 I assume something I got a contradiction so I'm entitled to the negation of that so this is negation intro in other words I did a proof by contradiction 11 through 14 here I use negation elim um, 15. Here I say, okay, well, from nothing I prove that A is pretty. Uh, so here in line 17, I say by universal intro uh, 11 through 16, everyone's pretty. Here I have an and intro um, 17 and 9. Here I have a bottom intro, it's getting a little messy, but I think it should be still pretty clear. Uh, 18, uh, all right, now way up at line 10, I assume something, I got a bottom, and so by negation intro uh, 10 through 19, I conclude the opposite. In 21, I eliminate the double negation, and I did it, right? So this is only 22 lines, but it was pretty hard, I think, uh, by conditional intro, uh, by conditional intro, one through eight and nine through twenty-one. Okay. Uh, well, whew. well, 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 man. Okay, we win. Um, if you totally understood all that, or even if you 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 did it all by yourself and got it all right, maybe you you can stop the video. But uh, you know exactly what I'm going to do now. What I'm going to do now is the propositional analog. And I think the, the pursuing the propositional analog will, will deepen our understanding of everything that's happening. So, okay, here we go. Um, the propositional analog is uh, two uh, proofs, really, 
Uh, once again, I'll assume that there are only two objects in my domain of discourse, a, a person named B, a person named C. So if there exists someone who's not pretty, well then that's just saying that uh, B is not pretty or C is not pretty. Okay, and uh, what do I want to get out of this? Uh, I want to get out of this um, that it's not true that everyone is pretty. In other words, that it's not the case that uh, P is pretty and uh, C is pretty. So this is just one of the De Morgan laws, uh, which says that the, the negation of a conjunction is the disjunction of the negations. Okay, and uh, well, uh, why is this true? Uh, maybe the, the simplest thing to do is, because this is a negation, suppose it is true. Uh, and we'll get a contradiction. So, uh, that's exactly what we'll do. Uh, up here in line 2, we'll suppose that, uh, P, that B is pretty uh, and that uh, C is pretty. And yet, I am kind of staring at uh, lines 1 and 2 and I see that they're impossible together. Because line 1 says that one of them is not pretty, and so they can't both be. And so now we're going to do a proof by cases. And, uh, yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to say, alright, well suppose it's B that is not pretty. But, okay, well, you just got through telling me that, that B is pretty. So that means B is pretty and B is not pretty. And that is a contradiction. And sort of, I'm distressed to find that I just have to repeat this whole thing again now, right? Because now I have to say, okay, well, now suppose the other case, uh, the case that, that C was pretty. Well, uh, I know from line two that in fact C is pretty, um, but that is a contradiction. That's a bottom. And now in line 11, I say, well, both of the cases uh, in my proof by cases led to bottom, so therefore bottom, and so therefore we're done. All right. Um, well, uh, maybe you're kind of getting the hang of this now, right? Uh, that's exactly what happened above, right? Here, I suppose that kind of everyone was pretty. Well, here, everyone is only two people. Uh, and that's exactly what happened here in this line, too. I suppose that everyone, uh, everyone was pretty. And then, uh, over here, I immediately sort of went into a proof by cases. Uh, and I uh, showed uh, one at a time for each of the two objects. I supposed that they were not pretty. Well, that's what I'm doing here, right? I'm supposing that A is not pretty. Uh, well, then, uh, I remind myself that in fact I knew that B was pretty, and in fact I knew that C was pretty from the, from the blue dot. Of course, that's exactly what happens here on this red dot, right? This red dot says, but wait, uh, back in the blue dot, you told me that everyone was pretty. Okay, and then, uh, you know, I, I end them together. Um, so these purple ones are just the exact analog of this step. Uh, then there's this, uh, I'll go with a black dot, uh, step where we, we assert the bottom. So boom, 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 boom. These are all kind of the same. And then, all right, I need more colors. I'll go to sort of double blue. Now, in back in the double blue, I, I say, well, if both of my cases led to bottom, then bottom. And that's what's going on here. Okay, so um, this thing in the red uh, circle really is an infinite proof by cases. If you look at what's going on here and sort of analyze the kind of uh, the, the, the meta like logic of this or something, then uh, you will see that uh, what's happening here in this in this kind of um, uh, uh, this, this, this green, red, purple, black pattern, uh, green, red, purple, black, green, red, purple, black, is just a kind of more elegant proof by cases. It's a proof by cases with the infinite number of cases. Line one is telling me that someone out there is not pretty. And so uh, instead of considering them each individually and showing that, that, that that's impossible, I now consider sort of an arbitrary object A having the property of being not pretty. And I'm sort of doing the cases on sort of every possible person uh, who might be the person who is, who is not pretty and showing that, that none of them work. Okay. Finally, uh, we get to the last uh, part of this video, uh, which is uh, the analog of, of what I consider to be the, the hardest of the four de Morgan's laws in predicate logic. Well, no surprise, this is the hardest of the four uh, versions of propositional logic. 
And uh, all right, what what is it that we're really doing? Well, it's just the converse of this. So okay, so now I know not uh, p of b and p of c, and way down here I'm going to have um, not uh, p of b uh, or not p of c. All right, and uh, I want to convince you that this proof, these proofs are the same. And the, the sort of initial frustration, maybe, or, or, or learning, to put a positive spin on it, that you had while trying to do this, this was, this was proof number 14. Uh, this was maybe the, the first really hard thing, the first really hard fish style proof that we did. Uh, and hopefully you will sort of be reminded of, of the thought process you were going through while doing this proof number 14, uh, which is what we're about to do right now. And you will see how that's, that's exactly what's going on here in this proof 42. Okay, uh, well, uh, let's go. Uh, what do we do? Well, I have this negation. Uh, it says that it's not true that, that they're both pretty. Uh, and I want to conclude that um, down here that uh, either B is not pretty or C is not pretty. And remember that uh, it, it, what you would want to happen is to be able to just prove it for, for one of them, right? You would want to be able to show uh, that it's, it's B, in fact. Uh, which doesn't have property P. Because if I could show that, that would, that would make me really happy because then I could just OR this on sort of trivially and I would be done. That's the most straightforward way to prove uh, a disjunction. But that is hopeless because it simply doesn't follow from line 13 uh, that B doesn't have property P. Uh, line 13 just says that uh, it's not true uh, that they both do. Um, but it could be C, in fact, uh, that was making, uh, making uh, P uh, of B and P of C false, right? So I can't, from just line 13, I can't say that B is not pretty. Uh, all I know is that it's not true that both of them are. And so I'm not going to be able to, to ever do this. And similarly, I'm not going to be able to show that it's, that it's C who's not pretty. And so, sadly, uh, or something, uh, it was at this moment that we realized, okay, we need to do a proof by contradiction. And so our, our inability to, to show which one of them it was that was not pretty uh, required me to sort of treat this, uh, treat them sort of together. And uh, so we did the only possible thing we could do, which was a proof by contradiction. So we said, uh, suppose way up here uh, that... Uh, it's not the case that, maybe I should use brackets, um, not P of B uh, or not P of C, cha 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 cha, and then uh, I'll show that that leads to a bottom, and then uh, I can, give me a second, um, cha 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 cha. Then I, I get that, and then I uh, eliminate the, 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 the double negation. Okay, so this was our plan from a long time ago. And then recall how sort of lost and confused we were um, because it's the exact same situation we're in again, right? We have these two negations. Let's just, let's just kind of uh, sort of complete the, the, the analysis, right? There's sort of blue dot, blue dot, um, which is, these are exactly analogs of each other. Then there's, uh, you know, then there's this, this red dot here where I do a proof by contradiction because I can't think of what else to do. Uh, so I have, sort of have to do it by contradiction. And then uh, I'm going to arrive uh, down here at this uh, big, uh, big green dot or something. Let's call this double green. Uh, and, and, then, uh, and then there's this sort of uh, trivial step where we uh, conclude uh, the, the proof by contradiction. And then we um, uh, get rid of the, the double negation. So that's, so far, they're exactly analogous. Let's go outside in. Um, and now, I found myself, this is what made this proof so hard, kind of just completely stuck again. And I sort of said, man, how am I going to figure out kind of, kind of which one of these it is? Uh, and uh, what we then did, uh, let's see, what did we do? Well, we said, okay, um, well, okay, it's the exact same, com it's the exact same conversation. I need to get a contradiction from lines 13 and 14, but what? What contradiction am I going to get? Uh, certainly, I'm not going to be able to prove this thing in brackets, uh, because if I could pr have proven that thing in brackets, then I just would have done so directly. 
It's my very inability to prove that thing in brackets which caused me to start this proof by contradiction in the first place. And therefore, the, the contradiction is going to come from line 13. And that's, that's how we knew that uh, the contradiction was going to be P of B uh, and P of C uh, and not uh, P of, of B and P of C. Uh, sorry, and not P of B and P of C. Like this. Okay, in other words, we're going to, to uh, contradict line 13. And in order to contradict line 13, I have to prove that P of B and P of C. And how am I going to prove P of B and P of C? Well, I'm going to do them one at a time. Well, how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to, and here's where I sort of have to do it, right? I'm going to do another proof by contradiction. I'm going to suppose not P of B uh, and show that that leads to a contradiction. Why does it? Well, it just does, right? Because um, I can then or on this not P of C. Man, this video is taking forever. And that is now a contradiction with line uh, 14, right? So can I just, I'm just going to write here, um, well, okay, I guess I'll just do it. Uh, I'm just going to write line 16 and line 14. Uh, and then that, that is, a, uh, is a contradiction. And then uh, what do I conclude? I conclude from this not, not uh, P of B, and so P of B. And then I have to do the whole thing again with C. So now I once again, writing kind of small, say suppose not uh, P of C. Uh, well, uh, I or on this not P of B. Uh, and now I assert sort of like line 22 and line 14, which is a contradiction, which gives me not not P of C which gives me a P of C, and there it is, 28, 29, 30, 31. And the final thing is 32. Okay, so searching for deep understanding here, you will find that this assumption that B was not pretty, and this assumption that C was not pretty, has this direct analog here, and my assumption that A was not pretty. What's the very next Thing I do, uh, well, in my transition from line 15 to 16, I sort of weaken my line 15 by saying, okay, if I, if I know at the moment that B is not pretty, now let me just weaken it by saying someone is not pretty. And the same thing is happening here in 22. Well, this is exactly what happens here in line 12, right? I, I, knowing that A is not pretty, I then sort of generalize and weaken uh, by saying, well, someone is not pretty. Uh, and then uh, we just kind of do like a, okay, I'm really running out of dots, so uh, maybe like I have like three blues now or something, uh, which is just kind of asserting the, the, um, the, the, the fact that uh, these are, are contradictory. Uh, and then like, you know, three reds or something, uh, which is the bottom, uh, and the bottom, and, oh man, if you're still watching, it's incredible. Uh, and then maybe like two purples um, to, to say that those led to a contradiction. Uh, and that's here. And okay, what, what, what do I still have left? Um, have I used two of everything? What is this system? No, I guess I have, I guess I have, uh, let me make this three blues. Wait, I really should probably have like done a better job with this, right? Like make this three uh, and this two. Um, so I do like two before three or something. And then, uh, what the hell was I gonna do with that next? Oh yeah, and then, then make this like three greens. So now we can use two greens, which would be this and this and uh, this. Uh, I think is what I want. Oh yeah, and there's even one more coming. Oh my god, one, two, three, four, one. So then this should be two reds, not three. This will be three down here. Silliest video ever. Uh, and then, wait, what do I have left? No, I've already now used one, 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 two, 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 
Three, three, no. I get to go. I get to do three purples now, right? Oh my gosh. Uh, so this is three purples, sha, and three purples, and I guess I can still do black. I never did black. Uh, so that's one black and one black, and okay. My gosh, what is happening here? Is this worth it? Who can say? Um, uh, but uh, oh, and then then that means. That means I want to do sort of that, right? Yeah. Okay. I think now it's all back to being uh, good. So what's what's what the hell is going on here is uh, that this 15 through 18, this uh, this this green, purple, double blue, double red, green, purple, double blue, double red is exactly matched by this green, purple, double blue, double red. It's the exact same argument. Here I suppose that it, uh, that B is not pretty. Uh, and that C is not pretty here. I suppose that A is not pretty. I generalize by weakening in my transition from, from single green to single purple. Here I transition from single green to single purple again by weakening my statement from A is not pretty to uh, there is someone who's not pretty. Then uh, in, in, in this 17, 23, 13 double blue thing, I realize that the previous line is impossible because it contradicts my, my line 10, uh, the, the single red. Uh, and then I get this this contradiction, and so really, okay, okay. What, what what's really happening here is, in the propositional logic case, um, I'm forced to because everything is finite, uh, sort of reprove this tediously for both B and C. After all, my goal down here in this in this triple purple was to show that B is pretty and C was pretty. Um, but now in the infinite case, I somehow get more elegance, right? Because if now I need to show that everyone is pretty. Well, I can't be just proving it for every single person because I might have an infinite number of objects. And that's why um, I do it simultaneously. That's what's really going on in this, in this universal proof that begins uh, just above line 11. I, uh, I declare my intention to, to sort of perform this propositional style logic kind of once and for all on every single object in my domain simultaneously so that I don't have to sort of do it with B and then do it again with C. Okay, I think this maybe just makes complete sense, and maybe that, that we're done. Uh, in here in the triple purple, I conclude, having done it tediously for B and C, that in fact is true for both of them. Here in the triple purple, I conclude, having done it simultaneously for every single object, the logic, that in fact everyone is pretty. But of course, the single black tells me that that's impossible because it contradicts the single blue. Uh, and uh, so I have a contradiction, and, uh, and, and, and that's it. Okay, uh, so if you already understand this, then maybe you understand this as well. Maybe you understand them sort of both uh, kind of better now, uh, and you understand the, the, the relationship between propositional logic and predicate logic. This is a very thorough explanation. Um, so, yeah, good luck with your proofs. Goodbye.